Romans chapter 8. Therefore, Romans chapter 7, there is therefore now no condemnation. Read with that John chapter 3. To them that are in Christ Jesus. I'm not going to get hell. I'm not going to get the wrath of God. The worst thing I can get is lost rewards. Wood, hay, or stubble. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now this chapter we're going to look at flesh and spirit. There's a difference. For the law of the spirit of life is Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So there's two spirits. There's two laws. I mean, there's one law. There's a spirit of life that comes through Jesus Christ. And there's a law of sin that brings death. So anybody who wants to follow the law, it's death. Those who want to follow Christ, is life. Reason why Romans 6.23 is written for the Christian, yeah, I'm supposed to live godly. I'm supposed to do righteous. According to the Bible, I'm supposed to be sinless. And yet I'm not. I'm still going to die. But even that, this body, this flesh sins. I have eternal life for my soul and my spirit by Jesus Christ. This flesh, if the Lord tarries, ends up in a grave, rots, disintegrates. That's the cause of sin. And then God will resurrect this body, give it a new body, and then it will be redeemed. For what the law could not do, oh, see, the law could do something. In that it was weak through the flesh. So the flesh could not do what the law. In your flesh, without Jesus Christ, you can't be saved by the law. Your flesh is too weak. Jesus says, For whosoever man looketh upon a woman, the lust after in his heart has already committed adultery with him. Try that with channel changing. Try that with billboards on a highway. Try that walking through a grocery store and seeing ads. That's it. You're done. By the law. God sent us his own son in the likeness of sickness, sinful flesh. So Jesus Christ was 100% man, 100% God. For sin, condemned sin in the flesh. So Christ came sinless to get victory over sin by being sinless. And being sinless, he fulfilled the entire law that we couldn't do. Now when somebody comes up and says, well, the law, the law, however they say for salvation, their law, the law. You just said that you are equal to Jesus Christ. And that's nowhere a teaching in the Bible. Because you can do the same thing Jesus did. In order to fulfill your life of salvation by the law, you've got to do what the law told you to do. And Jesus did. And you claim the same thing. That you are outside your flesh, which is weak to the law. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So in Christ, we can fulfill the law. This is miserable, rotten flesh that we carry around. But in the eyes of God, through the righteousness of Jesus Christ, there is no sin. That zombie you carry around on your back, that's the sinner. God is pleased when we see that flesh in the dirt, in the ground, buried, and Jesus Christ is living. That's what pleases God. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. So right there, you can't live fleshy and you can't live holy. You can't do it. It's impossible. You got to lay that, that flesh down or you got to lay the spirit down. But thanks to God, Jesus Christ, we have the total victory over all sin and death by his death, burial, and resurrection, by his sinless life, by him fulfilling the law. I may still sin, but in Christ, I'm not a sinner. I've been washed. 
I've been redeemed. But my life, what's my life after salvation? I can live after the flesh or I can live after the spirit. That's my choice. And I won't be condemned. But I can gain rewards or I can lose rewards. Based upon do I want to live after the flesh or do I want to live after the spirit? You say, what if you flip-flop? Then you lose rewards. God is not going to reward you for anything done in the flesh. For to be carnally minded, carnival, to be carnally minded is death. And I remember a few years ago, I forget how many years, the, the, the vacation Bible thing that was going on was carnival. So that in Jesus Christ, I had a pastor told, well, we had kids got saved from that. To be carnally minded is, what's it say? So go ahead, use a carnival atmosphere for your salvation purpose of little children. And the Bible says, for to be carnally minded is death. And we go back to verse 2, the law of the spirit of life is in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. There's a difference between the law. There's a difference between Christ. There's a difference between life. There's a difference between death. There's a difference between flesh. There's a difference between spirit. And there's a difference between carnality. But to the spiritually minded is life and peace. So there's a difference between carnality and there's a difference between spirituality. And if you think you're going to use carnality to win souls to Jesus Christ, it says death. We're going to use the movie star Hollywood thing. We're going to do is we're going to come up with skits. Is that carnal or is that spiritual? All right. If it's carnal, death. If it's spiritual, then it says life and peace. And in the body, in the flesh, there's no peace. And the stupidest thing to put over someone's tombstone, rest in peace, if they're burning in hell for all eternity. You're not rest. The flesh may be resting, but one day it'll catch up with that soul. And if that soul is in hell, there'll be no rest. The rest and peace only comes by Jesus Christ. Listen, if this body dies right now, It'll be in the grave. It'll be resting. It'll be sleeping. But my soul is present with the Lord. That body's only going to enjoy peace and, and rest with Jesus Christ in New Jerusalem. Not by the law. Not by his carnal living. God's got to change that. The Bible says he's got to give me a new body. Why? Because this one's rotten. So, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Carnivals, carnival, carnival is against, it is extreme angered against God. So we're going to use worldly means, we're going to use carnal, they won't say carnal, but we're going to use flesh, that's a word there, chapter 8, we're going to use fleshy means to witness for God, and God says, that's enmity against me, and you think it's going to, you think God's going to prove of what you do with the flesh or you do with carnality or witnessing to people. And when God says it's enmity, when God says it's death, these people are going to die and they're going to burn in hell thinking they're saved. I didn't say it. The dangers of using flesh to get people to Christ is an enmity. It's a condemnation. It's death. To God. It don't work. It don't work. I'm sorry. For it is not subject to the law of God. Neither can neither indeed can it be. There are things that God hates. There are things that God cannot and will not approve of. No matter what man comes up. I can open up the Bible, study the Bible, and be a, a great ambassador. I am saved for the Lord. But if I can say I find the Bible, lollipops will get you to heaven. God is not going to agree with it. And lollipops will not get you to heaven. I don't care how much doctrine I show you. If that's not what God said, God's not going to change his word because, because of what somebody said. It has to be of the Spirit. It has to be of Jesus Christ. It has to be of the Word. It has to be of faith. It has to be of believing. 
No fleshiness nor carnality. The Corinthian church had a problem with that, Paul will tell us later, Lord willing. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You cannot say you're a Christian. Living worldly, living by your own fleshly desires and say God's pleased with you. You can't say that. You are in the flesh. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. You're going to die. You may die early. You may die horribly. You may die with the condemnation of God upon you, the wrath of God, by being a sinner and still suffering at the judgment seat of Christ. Listen, cancer. One of the things cancer kills people by is not by God giving you cancer. It's by you're doing something to cause cancer. Smoking, drinking, being in a place where you're not supposed to be. Majority of the time, a sexual disease is not from God. It's because you are not where you're supposed to be and doing what you're not supposed to be doing. And that doesn't please God. And Romans chapter 8 says that's death. But ye are not in the flesh. You got that? You are separated. There's a separation right there. You are not in the flesh. But I am in the flesh. I'm in this body, but in the spirit. And so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man hath not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. This flesh is outside of me, inside me, the Holy Spirit. If you do not have the Holy Spirit indwelling in you, you are not saved. That's the difference between salvation and damnation. Do you have the Bible, God, ordained, right, Holy Spirit dwelling in your heart by what God has prescribed to you? Or do you have what Paul calls another spirit? You've got to have that right Holy Spirit in you. And going by what Romans 8, Paul's writing to the Romans, is if you got that Holy Spirit in you, yes, you're going to sin. We're all sin. All have sin. Paul said that I, I, I don't want to do, that I do, and that I don't want to do, that I do. And as the Holy Spirit is, we grieve when we do sin. That's the difference. We are truly sorry. It is bugging me today that, that uh, somehow I may have offended a, a, a fellow Christian and I did not mean to. But that's bothering me. And that's the Holy Spirit saying, and I may not have. But I don't want to cause that discord. I don't want to put that thing in the body of Christ. So the Holy Spirit's working on my conscience, you know. Now, a carnal Christian, a Christian that's in the flesh, would say something just to get the, the, the discord and wouldn't care at all. And God's not with that. And in order to be saved, you've got to have presently with you the Spirit of Christ. And that Spirit of Christ is the comfort of Jesus. And once he abides with you, he'll never leave you or forsake you. And if Christ be in you, no, they said if, you shouldn't doubt Christians. That's not right, judging Christians they're saved or not. If Christ be in you. Paul's writing those wrong. Hey, maybe you're saved, maybe you're not. That's Paul. The blood, the body is dead because of sin. The way does it sin. See this flesh? Look at me. See who I am? It's dead. You're looking at a zombie. Don't wash me for three days. Four days, Martha says. And you'll say, man, he stinketh. There's not much difference from a dead body from a live body when it comes to washing in four days, is there? That's the reminder. You know what? Who are, whoa, whew. Yeah, that's who I am. Sometimes it's not the blood of Jesus Christ, it's a little right guard. If Christ be in you, the body is dead because this body's dead. Forget it. I do sin. I got to confess my sins. But hey, I'm saved. 
because of sin. But the spirit of life, the Holy Spirit, because of righteousness. I got life. Because in me, I got the Holy Spirit. And it's by Jesus Christ. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. See, that Holy Spirit raised Jesus too. That Holy Spirit that's dwelling in me is the same Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the grave. He's in me. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal, your dead body. Now, Paul is not written to dead Roman. They may be dead now, but he did not write to dead Romans. They're alive, they're well, they can read, they can hear. And he says, your body is mortal, present. Your body is dead, if you're saved. So why should a Christian put makeup on, on a corpse? Your bodies be by his spirit that dwelleth in you. This body's dead, it's going to be resurrected. If the Lord does not tarry and a rapture happens within my time, this body will bypass death. It won't see the grave. And it'll still be changed to be made new. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors. We are debtors. Not to the flesh. To live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, you want to do a fleshly life, ye shall die. Promoting that early death. You can die before God's time. I believe, and I don't have scripture for it, but I believe God has a day for us when our death happens. And I believe we can push that day, day ahead by sin. There was a king in the Bible. He rolled over against the wall. He seriously repented to God. Seriously got right. Repented his sin. And God says, I will add to him 15 years. I believe you can extend that day. But sin will make you dead early. Walking out in the middle of traffic without, walk, without looking both ways. Great possibility if you do that all the time. Great possibilities you will die before the time that God has thought you to die. Probably with great pain. And we do not need to suffer that. We just need to do right. We. But if through the Spirit do mortify, kill, death, the deeds of the body, kill this body. Don't go slaying Christians' necks off. Don't go killing people because they go against the church. Battle this flesh you got right here. This is the problem. This is a spiritual warfare. Your eyes don't want to see that. No, the Holy Spirit don't want to see that. I don't want to taste that. No, it's not good for the body. I don't want to do this. No, it's not good. God doesn't approve. I don't want to go there. Well, God approves. And when you do and adhere to what God wants, you put the body to death. And it goes in that graveyard and goes, oh, 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 oh. Shut up. You're dead. No. Oh, shut up. I'm going to choose to serve God. And then that thing comes out of the grave and gets you on the spec. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. That thing just won't stay in the grave. You've got to tell that corpse, no. That's one thing I, I do believe with some of these advertisements. Say no. Not the drugs. Say no to the flesh. You'll get yourself out of trouble. Get your hand in that cookie. No cookie. Go ask mom. No, I don't want to do that. Then no cookie. I want to, no. We got to realize this flesh is dead. But we let it live. For as, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, God controlling your life, they are the sons of God. How's that? When I let the Holy Spirit, when I let God and the Word of God and Jesus Christ rule my life, I'm His son. 
For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. I'm not under that bond. I'm not under thou shalt not. Don't do this. Blah, blah. I'm not under that. For fear. Fear of what? If I don't do right, God's going to slam the lightning bolts down on me. If I don't do that, God's going to kill me dead right there. I'm not under that bondage. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Abba means Father. God, Father. Call no man your father. There's no other father as God the Father by the Holy Spirit of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ any other father, listen, I believe honestly, a man has no title as, should, as a father for a Christian. There should be no other father. Call him dad. Call him mister. But there's only one father. That's Father God. And I can call him father and I can be his son when I let him, his word, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit rule my life. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. See, I have a spirit. I've got two spirits in me. i got me, styly spirit, and i got the Holy Spirit. That we are the children of God. My spirit with the Holy Spirit say, hey, we're gods. And we've got two against one. We've got the Holy Spirit. we got my spirit. We want to do right. And then the stupid flesh overpowers them sometimes. See how powerful your flesh is? You mean your spirit, hey, I want to do right, and the Holy Spirit, yeah, let's go, and that flesh rises up. And you got that's when you gotta to pray to the Lord, 1 John 1 9. And if children, then hairs. Hairs of God. Look at that. How's that inheritance? And joint hairs with Christ, not only inheritance with God. But a joint hair with Christ. What Christ gets as the beloved son of God, I get part of his inheritance. And then I get inheritance of God, my father. If so be that we suffer with him. Uh-oh. That's a conditional clause to get part of that joint hair with Christ. That millennial reign. You got to suffer. You don't suffer in the flesh. You got a sin that you really crave and you keep telling your body no and you lose. You you sin. All right, we all sin. But you fight that body, you fight that flesh, you fight that temptation, you fight that sin. You know the Bible says in James that if we beat that temptation, there's a crown waiting for us. There's a crown if you tell your flesh no, not doing it. Nope. For Jesus Christ, I'm not doing that. You may catch me another time, but right now, I'm saying no, I'm not doing it for Jesus Christ. That's suffering. What? Who's yelling at you? Who's spitting in your face? Your own body. Your own worst enemy. Superman may have had a, I don't know, I forget, who cares? All those superheroes had their arch enemies. I've got an arch enemy. Satan? No. This flesh. And it lives with me every day. That's an arch enemy. When this thing wants to do what I don't want to do, Paul said in chapter 7, and what I want to do, the flesh doesn't want to do, that's an enemy. And God is up there, okay, who's going to win today? Can I bless him? Or i got to give him death. So there's no walk in the middle. You walk down the middle of the road and Revelation 4 says makes God sick. He wants to vomit. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. You can't even talk about heaven. You can't even talk about those crowns. Yeah, I know what the crowns are. I can't describe them. I don't know what it's going to be like. But I sure know the suffering. I sure know my body hates it. I hate, This body hates when someone yells at me preaching the gospel. God will love it. God says, how beautiful are those feet. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature going all the world and preach the gospel to every way. Creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, 
but by the reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption, death, into the glorious liberty of the child of God. This body is going to be remade new. It ain't going to be like the old body. It's going to be a, a holy body. Say, describe it styly. Are not worthy to compare it to the glory which shall be revealed. I, there's no explaining. I don't know what it is to be sinless. Because I'm a sinner. I don't know what it is to be pain, painless. I've never ever been painless. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together unto now. That's why there's hospitals. That's why there's ambulance. That's why there's a police force. That's why there's rescue squads. That's why there's pharmacies. That's why there's pain clinics. That's why there's tears. That's why there's a funeral homes. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wait the redemption of our body. Oh God, can you call us home now? Lord, can today be the day? Lord, I'm fed up. I think I read, and I, I've been off Facebook being in the hospital. I, I, it sounds like a, a, a fellow sister in the Lord who's had trouble. It may be even worse trouble now or a, a swelling. Lord, isn't that person had enough? Lord, he took the gold, the, the stone out of this other person. Isn't the pain enough? Come on, Lord, isn't a toe good enough? You want the whole foot? Isn't this pain? I want to go home, Lord. I'm tired. They don't want to listen to you. I'm tired. I'm tired of getting yelled at. I want to go home. I want to be with you. I'm your son. Call me home. I'm getting tired of being this pig smart, but you won't let me walk and get home. That's what it's like. And it's not complaining. That's our body. We're groaning. Groan within ourselves. Oh, Lord, please be today. For we are saved by hope. I hope he will now. It's not, I hope Jesus is coming. I know he's coming. I hope it right now. Please. It's like a, I'll use Christmas. Uh, it's coming up. A parent tells their child, we bought you a bike. But you're not going to get it until December 25th. Well, that kid, that kid does not. Have to hope that his parents bought a bike. His parent already said, we bought you the bike. You're just not going to get it the 25th. So that kid's now hope is not the bike. It's December 25th. That's what Jesus said. Hey, you're going to get the redemption of the body. I told you, okay, I believe that. Only problem, worst thing, he hasn't even told me when. I don't know the date. That makes even more hopeful. God, I can't circle it on my calendar. We're saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. That day when I see Jesus in the clouds, that's it. All hope is gone. All faith is gone. There he is. There's my Savior. That's the one I've been preaching about. That's the one I've been reading about. That's the one I've been teaching about. That's the one I've been praying for. That's the one I've been loving. That's the one. Faith is done. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. There he is. He's there now. The evidence of not seen. There's his face. I've seen him. All hope and faith is done the day I see Jesus. Whether in, absent from the body, present with the Lord, or at the rapture where I don't die, there he is. That's what I'm waiting for. That is my win the lottery, forget the lottery. I'll get the greatest lottery at all. I'll get gold, silver, and precious stones. And they won't tax me. But hope that is seen is not hope. What if that little boy walked in there and saw the bike? What if the parents said, all right, you know what? It's not December 25th. We'll give you the bike right now. But that's it. There's his hope. It's gone. There's the bike, and it's been get delivered to him. My hope will be, point, Trump goes off. Here we are with Jesus. That's it. The date has come. I've seen him. For what a man seeth, why does he hope yet? Why does he yet hope for? Why would that boy hope for that bike December 26, December 27? Now, he may hope it stops snowing so he can go ride it. But as far as the bike itself, it's there. He's got it now. It's been the date. It's been the give. 
But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? Now, that's a hard one. That's a hard one, patience. But are we going to twist God's arm and leg to get him to come quicker? I don't think so. You know, there have been people who say, if we go blow up that mosque over there, you know, it'll, it'll promote the building of the temple. And God had them be caught. And they probably serve a jail time, if not lost their life. You're not going to quicken God for the rapture. And don't think because there, there's a tornado in this place, and there's an earthquake in this place, and the ocean's right, and God's going to say, okay, I guess I'm going to send you some. No, it ain't going to work. we got to patience. You know, Paul believed Jesus was coming this time, and Paul's been in the grave for an awful long time. Peter, James, John. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Isn't that great? Did it say alcohol helped your infirmities? Does it say booze? Does it say drugs? It says the Spirit helpeth our infirmities. And when you got a condition in your life, physical, you're broken, I wrote the other day. Mentally, I'm a little unsound. Not feeling well. But spiritually, I'm righteous. I'm, I'm on the mountain. God's getting me through. There's something for me. I don't know what. But God is still using me. Amen. For we know not what we should pray for as we are. Uh-oh. So what do you do with all these books on the market? How to pray, just pray, that prayer, good prayer. All these books on the market about pray, and God said in Romans 8 through Paul, we don't know what we're to pray. But the Spirit itself makes his intercession for us. I thought Jesus did that. Well, wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. If Jesus prays for us, and the Bible says that, right? And it does. And the Spirit makes intercession for us. And it just said that. So that means Jesus and the Spirit are one. Kind of interesting if Jesus is not God when the Holy Spirit is God. And, the Holy, and God is the Holy Spirit. And now Jesus is the Spirit. And the Spirit is Jesus. And they're all three in one. So when you build your religion that God is not Jesus, you totally threw the Bible out the window. Because guess what, Christian? Christian. You have the Spirit. That Spirit and Jesus are praying for you in your trouble. No one's praying for me. Jesus and the Holy Spirit are. And they're present with the Father. And the Bible says if other Christians pray for you, they're present at the throne of God too. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be other. You know, that's that's stolen by the charismatic there's that, that i heard a guy doing until the other day he's giving his man good and he went back i'm like did i just hear tongues i think that was he had to tell us that was tongue speaking i was like i thought there was a radio transmission or something from the russians and if we don't know how to pray and the holy spirit does you ever wonder sometimes if, okay, we're in pain. Now, you're not going to like this. Father, their pain to be relieved of their pain. But you know what? I think they need more. We don't know how to pray. Father, I really need a good job. God, sir, I think he needs to lose his job. It's hard to believe, wouldn't it be? But the Holy Spirit knows how to pray and knows what we need to get the attention of our life to adjust in our life. It? And it may be a cancer. It may not be a luxurious life. Father, you know, uh, so, someone's lost here. They need to be saying, Father, you need to have somebody go up and give it to them a right, at, right in their face. And you can't even moan the words that the Holy Spirit others. And people try to imitate that. And that's not the Holy Spirit. That's another spirit that Paul talks about. And that's dangerous. 
Because in order to utter these moanings that the Holy Spirit did, you've got to be in heaven itself. You've got to be God himself. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God, not the flesh. Don't go ask for God for money for your filthy uh, endeavors. You won't get it. Now, if you want money to pay your bills and, and help some missionaries and tracks like that, maybe God will answer. If God, if that's what God wants you to do. Lord, you haven't given me a million dollars. If I gave a million dollars, I'll support missionaries and help the church and all that. God's like, that's not what I want you to do. How's that? And I've heard on the television being a week and all, give money, give money, give money. I've heard that prosperity. That may not be the will of God in your life. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. That's a strong verse. That's always. If we do it God's way, you notice how we separate from the flesh and we go on from the spirit. Talking about the spirit, spirit, spirit. If we do what the Holy Spirit does in our life, no matter how far our lives are dragged down to the ground, such as Job. In the end of Job's life, it was praising God to his glory. God's glory. And to what the suffering we get and the problems we get and the non-answer to prayers that we get, when we get to glory, we walk around with crowns. That's to God's glory. And even to the worldly, fleshly Christian, you say, hey, see that guy over there with those crowns? You had the same opportunity. Matter of fact, I put that guy in your church. I made that guy suffer so you can see, and you never got the lesson. And the, and the glory to God will be for that man who wants to be fleshy. It was all done in vain, where he didn't do it in vain. From whom did he foreknow? Now, I'm not going to get into predestination or that. For he foreknew, foreknew, God knew. I'll tell you one thing. Predest uh, predestination always follows God foreknowing. God already knew that Stiley Haber's name would be written in the Lamb's Book of Night. He knew Pharaoh would reject him. He knew the king of Babylon would help him with, with Israel, getting him to Babylon. He knew Jeremiah would be a right prophet. He knew Pilate would do what he would do. To be also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. I'm going to be in the image of Jesus Christ. That was set forth before time ever started. There will be people called out that will believe on Jesus Christ. And I will be the image of his son. Which image? Now here's a danger. Here's a danger. If I were to go walk in a Catholic church and see an image of his son, I would see a white man. Uh-uh. Nope. If I were walking some black churches today, I would see a black man. Uh -uh. Sorry. If I walk into a synagogue, I would see no man. They don't worship no images. So what would be the image of Jesus Christ that the Bible speaks of right here? I'm going to be made in. Isn't that what I'm hopeful? Holy yeah, but I'm saying, don't you, don't you just by reading the scriptures, the, 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 the image you do get, you're just hoping I'm going to be like him. What, what are you going to look like? I don't know, but I hope so. That's another hope, isn't it? I'm going to be like the sun. Haven't you drawn your own personality of Jesus through the scriptures? The Bible says in Romans, he's, he's got white, gray hair. Why? Because he had to dealt with us how many years? The image of his son. Now, you see why idolatry and imagery is such a sin? Because it takes you away from the, his son, Jesus Christ. Many Catholics are going to be upset when they get to heaven and realize that's not what he's going to look like. He's going to be short. He's going to be Jewish. I guarantee he's going to be very, you know, Jew, the, the Catholics never draw him muscular. You realize what it had to be to walk everywhere? I'm going to be real quick on this. But I'm going to be to the image of his son. I ain't going to have a halo. That he might be the firstborn among 
Many brethren, many brethren. I mean, some are going to lose it through the flesh. I don't understand. I'm going to read on. I'm not going to explain nothing. I don't know. But that's just interesting. Moreover, whom he did pre predestinate, them he also called. Okay, I called. Stolly? Yeah. You're a sinner. Okay. What do you want to do? What am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to believe on my son. And then I prayed a prayer to be saved by Jesus died for my sins in the belief that he can wash away my sin. God called me, and I answered. And whom he called, then he justified. I was justified that Saturday afternoon. And whom he justified, he also glorified. I was glorified. And not who I was, but who Jesus Christ is. And the Holy Spirit came in and dwelt in me. <clears throat> what shall we say? Then say to these things, I'm losing my voice, if God be with us, for us, who can be against us? This flesh, other than that. He that spared not his own son, uh-oh, but delivered him up to his all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things. Listen, if he allowed them to do that to Jesus Christ, you think, oh, I'm going to let you off the hook. That's where mercy and grace stands in. I don't get full what I should, but Jesus sure got it all. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God? God's elect. I'm an elect of God. How am I elect of God? God called me. You know why we never voted for a president this year, Richard Smith? There was no Richard Smith on the ballot. Correct. What if someone came to me and said, Stiley Hayward, how would you like to run for president? Okay. Put my name on the election booth. And everybody who had gone to the election would say, Stiley Hayward. How? Because I said, okay, I'll answer. I'll put my name on it. I'll do it. How do you get saved? God says, this is what you need to do. This is your condition. In order to get your name in the book, and if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have been asked by God to be chosen. Election. Here I am, Lord. Take me, Lord. Okay. I'll take you on the grounds of Jesus Christ. Amen, Lord. Okay, I'm elected now by Jesus Christ. Not before the foundation, right? even though Jesus knew I would be saved. But I still had that free will. And Jesus would have knew if I did not get saved. But he still gives me the free will. It's never by force. That election is there by you saying, yeah, Lord, elect me. By Jesus Christ. It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that dieth, yea, rather, that is risen again. So, see, you can celebrate the death of Christ all you want. You can hang that cross around, around your neck all you want. You can put a cross on a building all you want. But it's also he rose again. Who is even at the right hand of God? Jesus. Who also maketh intercession for us. Verse number 26. God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ are making intercession, are praying to God for us. There it is. They are having a prayer meeting at the throne, in the throne of God, about me. Now, how's that? Because I've got the Spirit, the Spirit's indwelling in me. He's praying to God for me, making intercessions, growing, so cannot be ordered. And the Bible already said in chapter 8, if you don't have the Spirit, you're not His. There's no union meaning around the throne about anybody who does not have the Spirit. Because there's no one there to pray for you. Because you don't have the Spirit. So imagine doing right and suffering and going through problems and troubles and pain and sorrow. You know what the number one thing you should forsake sin is to get right with the Holy Spirit. So when you got the pains, you got the troubles, they are talking about you at the throne of God. 
The Sherman! Holy, holy, holy! Oh, Lord God, Father, he's in the hospital again. Yeah, I know. And his only concern is he wants to go tell them about me. Yeah, I heard that. And now he's, and now he's concerned he, he, he offended somebody. Yeah, I know I heard that. He wants to be healed, Lord. He wants that whole thing to be healed. And I got to stop right there because what's the Holy Spirit saying now? Is the Holy Spirit saying, Father, he's worthy to be healed? Or Father, and let the Holy Spirit fill the gap. People don't want to talk about that prayer in a book, do they? They don't want to write that in a book. That Holy Spirit may say he needs a little more, Father. Or, yeah, go ahead, grant this gift. Everybody wants to grant him. They don't want to know or not now. They say, you know what? Leave the hole in his foot for the rest of his life. He deserved it. And I did. And I do. I couldn't sell a million books on that, could I? Imagine me writing a book, chapter one. Pray to God. Holy Spirit, Jesus will reign for you. And the Holy Spirit just may say, give them more. Yeah, that's going to sell a lot of books. Yep. yep. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Here we go. Shall tribulation? And that's not the great tribulation. That's trials and troubles in your life. Or distress. Weather phenomenons, you know, tornado, forest fires, persecution, famine. That gets you closer to God. <laughs> nakedness. That's nakedness by you've been destitute of clothes, not because you just take them all off. Or pearl. Paul went through a bunch of pearls. We'll be coming that pretty soon. Or sword. The Muslims are not going to separate you from the love of God. I can probably put that in it, right? As is written, for thy sake, Jesus' sake, for God's sake. Oh, I cuss. Nope, for God's sake. We are killed all the day long. We wake up dead, sheep. <laughs> There's another dead sheep. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Get in line. Head to the butcher shop. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved. Listen, you know, this flesh is supposed to be dead, remember? Get up to a dead body, serve the Holy Spirit, and get right. One day you're going to the slaughterhouse. If the Lord tarries. For I am persuaded, Paul said, that neither death, and he can separate you, nor life. Rapture may happen. Your bad conduct as a Christian. You choosing to go the worldly side. Choose to go carnality. Nor angels. Nor principalities. There's Satan and his forces. Nor powers. Nor things present today. Nor things to come tomorrow. Nor height. Nor death. Nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. There's no escape in salvation. No one says of angels, Mormons, I'm trying to think Jehovah's Witness, I don't think that, Catholics, Muslims, all say some angels spoke to their, their people. And if you as a Christian fall away to those religions, that's not, their teaching of their angels is not going to make you lose, you're saved. You're saved, you're saved. You just got followed up. You went with the flesh and didn't save with the spirit. But hey, if the love of God's in you and the love of God is only by the love of Jesus Christ, not you, you God does not hate the sin and love the sinner. That's a lie. That'll throw you out of context in Romans 8. The only way God loves you is if you love Jesus Christ. John 3, 16, the love is past tense. And if God loves you based upon Jesus Christ, then nothing's going to separate you from him. There's nowhere you can't go that God can't say, okay, he's died, bring him home. 
If he's in a capsule in outer space, he's just as closer. If he's in a, a submarine in the bottom of the ocean floor, the deepest trenches of the Pacific Ocean, it's just got a little further to go. We see in Romans 8, serving the Spirit. We, serve, we see the eternal security that God's given us. And we see the fulfillment of God through the gospel. And we see a little part that we read is, don't be in the flesh. The flesh will kill you. Everything else about God will give you life. You say, well, I'm going to die. Yeah, the flesh will die. You, we please. If you choose to serve God. 